to shift gears into some phone calls for Max with your economic uh, questions after we've uh, finished up uh, with uh, the callers that are currently on the line, military, police, and others. Are you concerned about the rebranding now? They're saying, okay, it was Al-Qaeda. Now it's anybody that doesn't like the Federal Reserve, and the Tea Party's going to blow you up. When they talk about Tea Party, they mean the real Ron Paul Tea Party, not the Rick Perry uh, Republican co-opted Tea Party where they say, yeah, let's get the bankers. They're doing that because we're starting to win. I want to go back to uh, Jake, uh, a retired police officer in Chicago who's concerned about the militarization of police. Uh, we've got a bunch of other current police, former police, military, all with comments as well, and, and we will get to you. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about some of the sponsors that make this broadcast possible. eFoods Direct is celebrating their third Max Kaiser. Uh, Jake, you were uh, bringing up things that you're really concerned about, the militarization of police, the goonishness of all of it. And you said you saw something on the news that really concerned you. Go ahead. Yeah, I get a call this morning. Somebody says, Dr. Jake, I sent you a link. Check it out. And I go on there and I see this thing where... Obama is telling, I believe the guy's name is Assad, telling him to step aside. And I thought, who in the hell is he to tell somebody else to step aside? And that just blew my mind that the, the gall of the way things are going, the way these people are acting towards other world leaders, telling them to get out of the way. Could you imagine if somebody from China told us, hey, stop doing this or that, we'd say, Mind your own business. Forget about it. And we'd go about our lives, right? Yes. And, I, and I, I see that the government is rapidly becoming more militarized in its function. As opposed to being more administrative, it is becoming more of a military operation. And like I had said earlier, when I see these local police departments with battering rams, guys in combat boots, think about if a woman called and said, I hear strange noises behind my house, could you please send a car? They send guys over there that look like military guys that would scare the hell out of children. And that's It's all the part of conditioning the public. They've had police chiefs admit that the black uniforms, the mask, it's meant to scare the public. They don't want police and the public being friends anymore. They want police to be revenue generators and enforcers just like they are in Mexico. I, mean, I remember going to Mexico 25 years ago and the cops were dressed there like they're dressed here now. Same thing in North Korea. It's all about intimidation. God bless you, my friend. Look, we are going into a total depression designed by the mega banks to institute a financial dictatorship. And in the case of Assad, it is admitted that NATO, the United States, and Israel have been shipping arms across the border to uh, radical Muslim groups, because he, he's got a secular government, to overthrow them. Just like they just helped overthrow Mubarak, the old dictator, and are putting in the Muslim Brotherhood. Only so they can have another war with the uh, Shiites and others in a couple of years. The globalists are that cold-blooded. And I'm not saying Assad's a good guy. But, but, but yes, that's why they put Obama in and gave him a peace prize. Well, so people say, well, he's the man of peace. This is not a war in Libya. It is peace. You know, I was reading, I keep saying four months. The AP was reporting there's been a war in Libya now for six months. Remember Obama? War in Libya to last, in fact, guys, pull this up. Obama, headline, conflict to last days. Or Obama, NATO involvement to last days, not weeks. That involvement's four and a half months. Been going on for a couple months before that. Six months. They're blowing up their power plants, their water production. They're laying siege. They're, they're killing civilians everywhere. Because he has been building up Africa and trying to create their own banking system. That is not, the Serbs tried to do that. Not allowed. Who'd they use to take out the Serbs? Al-Qaeda, Muslim extremist. Who'd they use to attack the Russians? Al-Qaeda. Who do they use to attack us so they can then take our rights away? Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Joining us is Max Kaiser, and I, I, I really appreciate uh, Max coming on the broadcast with us. Uh, he has TV shows with BBC, RT, Press TV, uh, radio talk show host. You can go to his website, maxkaiser.com, and learn more.
And he's an American broadcaster, filmmaker, and former equities broker. Worked with George Soros' son. I'll ask him about that someday. Kaiser is the host of On the Edge, a program of news and analysis. Uh, and uh, again, uh, Max Kaiser invented the Hollywood Stock Exchange virtual trading system. Virtual specialist technology used on many stock markets today. He lives in Paris uh, and uh, he joins us now from there via via phone. Max, I want to cover the waterfront with you today. I thought that was a really informative interview we did last week uh, with an InfoWars uh, nightly uh, uh, news report. Well, really the precursor to that starting September 1st. It was a InfoWars special report. Uh, but uh, I want to go over so much of what we see happening in the stock market, gold and silver exploding. Uh, where we are, I mean, I know you've predicted that we would continue to go into a depression, that you predicted that the euro would continue to collapse and they, they would call for a super euro, a, quote, financial European Union, uh, where, where now the bankers through France and Germany are going to be given total control over every facet of the nation state. Same thing happening here. The global banker occupation is accelerating. Um, uh, and again, I know... Uh, I have you here talking about basically more of the same, but things are moving so much quicker. Now we're getting a clear image of exactly uh, what their plan is. We're seeing newspaper headlines every day in the U.S. Casinos are the answer, just like NAFTA and GATT were the answer. The casino gulag economy you talked about, virtual currencies and video game uh, uh, systems. That's now, uh, we're being told, our new economy. I mean, this is literally something like uh, out of a nightmare science fiction movie, Max. Yeah, ag agreed, agreed. I think the, um, the, the interesting thing to look at today would be the French banks, okay, as the continuation of the story that you just told. Today, the French banks are collapsing, and in particular... Societe Generale, and the Societe Generale is basically the bank that got the huge bailout during the 2008 period. It is also where all of the derivatives that were on the books of AIG were moved. So when AIG was bailed out and vis-a-vis -vis these French banks were bailed out, uh, the bulk of the $600 trillion dollars in derivatives, and this is a number that the Bank of International Settlements just confirmed this week. There are over $600 trillion in derivatives floating around in the banking system, and derivatives is just a fancy word for debt. Most of that debt now sits on the books of Societe Generale in France, and that bank had a market cap of $150, $160 billion. It's now down to $16 billion, and the rumor here in France is that they're going to go bankrupt and that they will need another massive state bailout. And this will trigger... Well, let me stop you, Max, because we don't have the crew to go pull all this up, but you've predicted this, Bob Chapman, Webster Tarpley, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. I mean, years ago, you guys said there's going to, after the first round of bailouts in the U.S. and Europe, there's going to be more and more bailouts. These aren't really bailouts. This is a debt derivatives black hole that we don't owe, that we can't pay back. After each raping of the population and each new austerity move, they will just simply move from Ireland to Greece to Spain uh, to Italy to Portugal, later to France, England, and then Germany last. But instead, I mean, you've been absolutely right, it's hopping directly to France. So, so, so we've known that they were always going to, quote, bankrupt them, but, uh, but am I correct in saying that it's accelerating? It is accelerating because the hope was that at some point that the economy would grow and that there would be enough growth to, to grow their way out of this problem. But unfortunately, there's been a collapse in the economy. The unemployment keeps going higher, and uh, there is no growth. Growth is going in reverse. And in countries like the U.K., where they are in the process of rolling out austerity measures, there is increasing uh, stagnation. And the population is in revolt, and the population is in revolt in countries around the world, in Athens or elsewhere. And so that's not adding to any growth. So the ability to hide the debt is becoming impossible. Now, for 25 years, it was easy to hide the debt because it was in the context of a 25-year bull market in bonds, which means that interest rates for 25 years since Reagan took office were going down. And so every time new debt was 
due to be paid, you could simply roll it over and add to the debt pile without actually paying it off because interest rates kept going lower. So this was, in effect, kicking the can down the road. But now uh, you've got a situation where you've got global debt saturation, where it's impossible to hide the dirty laundry. And so now these banks are blowing up, and they're pulling out all of these unbelievably irregular, illegal banking and regulatory tricks to hide debt. If you go back to the collapse of Lehman Brothers, if you do a Google search for Repo 105, for example, Lehman Brothers were, was caught putting their debts onto a shadow bank a few days before they had to report their earnings to the SEC and then taking those debts back a few days later to avoid having to report the debt. The same thing that Enron was doing. Well, well, listen, I want to go over that, Max, but but here's the $64 million, or I should say $64 trillion uh, question that we've been talking about. We cover an Obama deception, fall of the republic that, that you appear in and, again, predict all of this in, now out for almost two years. They've created $1.5 quadrillion conservatively in fake derivatives. They've, they've gotten our, our pension funds, our stock markets tied up in them. And then the, the, the very criminals that engineered this Ponzi fraud are up there saying they're too big to fail and our entire world economy has to be fed into them. And the more we give them, the worse things get. And so how do we bring the criminals to justice? I mean, is there a point uh, that it's coming to or is there police state they've put in going to protect them? And if we can't bring them to justice through some avenue, and I want to hear your ideas on that, then where are they going to lead us? Well, the, 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 what the politicians are doing to try to avert this catastrophe, and we just heard it from Ben Bernanke, he wants to keep interest rates at zero for another two years or indefinitely. And so that's a catastrophe because it's zero percent interest rates that created the securitization and the Ponzi scheme to begin with. To get to your point from the earlier segment, this is what Ron Paul has been pointing out for years. Suddenly people understand this, and now you've got a Rick Perry jumping on that bandwagon, trying to capitalize on what Ron Paul has put 10 years into educating the public about. But those 0% interest rates are the root cause of the problem, because that's how you create and securitize this debt in ways where you can move it from one balance sheet on a bank in New York to a French bank and never have it go away. And so remember that the biggest single player in the global derivatives market with $90 trillion stated on their book of derivatives is J.P. Morgan. They are the counterparty to all of this debt, to all of these banks. Well, that they was my are. next issue. It's the mega banks that are completely zombie and have hundreds of times the debt that governments have. We're talking about the U.S. being insolvent over $14 trillion, five. Uh, and then meanwhile, we're talking about hundreds of trillions uh, inside of these individual banks, and they're lecturing us, Max. That's, it's insane. Right. J.P. Morgan is effectively an appendage of the Federal Reserve Bank, and they put all of these debts, these global debts, they wash them through their balance sheet and then put them on the books of the Fed. And then the Fed puts them on the books of the BIS in and, and, and Switzerland, and then the BIS ends up putting them on the books of countries like Greece and France and these other countries. And then the government end up saying we need to impose austerity measures to pay for this debt. But the fact is that people who are suffering the austerity measures were never responsible for incurring these debts. Now they're beginning to figure it out, and that's why they're rioting, because they're being asked to pay debts that they had nothing to do to incur. And they didn't get the fees when the debts were created. They're not collecting all of the bonus money and the salary bonuses to make this debt to begin with. They're just getting screwed. And the wealth and income gap, you know, that the spread between the top and the bottom has never been wider, not even during the Robert Barron period did you see such an extreme wealth and income gap. And that's what's driving a lot of the unrest is that the top one-tenth of one percent was controls an enormous percentage of the overall wealth, so that people are responding as you would predictably expect they would respond. They are revolting. Now you ask me what can be done about it. Obviously, the policymakers are in the pockets of the banks. Then you've got a guy like Ron Paul, who, for several years, was not even talked about on mainstream media. Now his message is so painfully obvious 
that you've got folks like John Stewart, who has a wildly popular daily show, come out and point out the inconsistency. This guy's being ignored. Why? And so now it's bubbling over, and now you've got the gloves have come off. Now Rick Perry, to raise the bar, is calling Ben Bernanke a tyrant, and, and, and things are hopping off, jumping off. Things are getting heated. In, in yeah, the system's so scared they're now trying to co-opt it with a guy they know is totally bought and paid for. Uh, totally plastic like Rick Perry. He's now, why, it's treacherous. Yeah, they're, they're treason. But it's all talk. That's how scared they are of Ron Paul, which, again, Ron Paul is a manifestation of the fact that his popularity signifies that people are really starting to wake up. So I want to talk to you, Max, about what's going to happen if we don't beat these bankers and, 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 and how you think we can beat them. Stay with us. You're coming up the next hour, and as you hear callers hang up, if you've got a quick question or comment on the economy for Max Kaiser, it's 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, of course, with InfoWars.com. So, Max, we're here. We've, we've broken it down historically, what the banking cartel's done. They bought the world through fraudulent derivatives. Now they're telling us that there are masters because they bought off our politicians, and they signed us on to their debts. I mean, it's completely asinine. Their only hope is to somehow sell us uh, on that we're guilty and we owe it. And so now I'm seeing the talking point uh, floated that anybody who's against the Federal Reserve, anybody that wants to audit the Fed, anybody who supports Ron Paul, they're the new terror threat. And Biden is saying they're going to hit us. So it's pretty clear they're getting ready for a false flag to be blamed on the people uh, maybe an attack against the Federal Reserve or something, and then the stock market drops 2,000 points, and they say, oh, Billy Bob Johnson of the Tea Party did it. He's the reason we had a depression. I mean, they're looking for something like that, while at the other angle that you mentioned, they've got Rick Perry coming in, trying to co-opt and saying, why, absolutely. Ron Paul says get rid of the Fed. I say arrest him. Uh, of course, that's all talk, but this shows how far the awakening process, the education process has gone. I mean, is this not an incredibly positive sign that people are actually talking about the real problem now, uh, the banker occupation? Yeah, and on the global level, it's resonating on the central bank level, and it's resonating in Venezuela because they now want 99 tons of gold that's stored for them in London delivered to them, the physical stuff. And here's the great thing about that is that the Bank of England really outsources that to J.P. Morgan, and J.P. Morgan doesn't have it. So they have to go into the open market to buy it. So Venezuela is doing Visa Gold, what that you know, what we were hoping to do with J.P. Morgan by buying silver. But they're, they're doing it with gold. They're saying we want all of our gold. But the, the fact is that the big banks like J.P. Morgan have sold gold that they don't have, and they have to go into the open market to buy the gold, and that's one reason why gold is now getting almost to the point of being in a parabolic upward trajectory where it'll go from 2,000, you know, quite a bit higher rather quickly because all these banks that have sold gold that they don't own are being forced to buy in the open market. And, and when all the players know that there's a forced buyer, then they – jump in and they get in front of that front train and it's self-feeding and it becomes what's called parabolic and you have well, this enormous move. That's the drum you've been meeting for several years, that they're all in there naked shorting silver and gold and if you take physical possession, that will short circuit them. Do you think Chavez is grabbing their gold because he knows that there could be a military move against him and a confiscation of it like Gaddafi or is he doing it to call their bluff? He, he wants the gold because he realizes that the paper money uh, era is finished. And uh, he's also nationalizing all the gold mines in Venezuela, and he wants the physical stuff delivered. And this is what's happening around the world. Central banks, for the first time in 30 years, are buying gold. It's, a, it's remarkable that back in the 2000-2001 period, Gordon Brown, who was the exchequer of the exchange in London at the time, actually sold half of Britain's gold. He sold 300 tons in the open market at what it amounts to $240 an ounce, the uh, historic low for the uh, you know post-war period. And he just basically uh, got rid of half of Britain's gold at the lowest price imaginable. And now he looks like a complete idiot. Max, stay there. Back in one minute. 
Max Kaiser with us another 20 minutes. Then we've got Dr. Bob Bowman uh, joining us to get into a lot of uh, the areas he's allowed to talk about dealing with secret space program with that big uh, hypersonic uh, aircraft that they uh, launched into orbit last week, a new space plane. I want to be breaking that down. Uh, Max, I want to get into the big enchilada here, though. So you've accurately diagrammed what's happened so far. Um, and we're talking about uh, France and Germany going into a big crisis. This is the final move to hold those countries hostage to the private banking cartel and set up a private financial e EU union, which is the, the, the genesis of the bank of the world that you talked about that the bankers will sell as the solution. You talked about that on one of our Infowars.com uh, special news reports last week. Uh, and so here it is. And the Daily Mail, uh, even Reuters and others, did call it a super euro uh, financial consolidation where the finance ministers themselves, bought and paid for by the banksters, uh, become the dictators of Europe. Um, continue breaking that down for us. Well, I mean, am I allowed to use the phrase forthright? Because last year in November of 2010, I did a special report on RT, and I outlined that the collapse in the European banking system was setting up a situation where you would seek a European bond market or a coordination of all the European banks, and that it would all be run out of Berlin. And this is a Fourth Reich. And now the mail article you just quoted, the headline of that article is, Welcome to the Fourth Reich, because this is what's happening now. Uh, it was the success uh, after three times the failure by Germany to control all of Europe because the entire system is going to be to, to, to when, when, when Deutsche Bank and a Society General go bankrupt this week or next week, the solution will be to bring in Eurobond to roll that debt up, as I've been saying now for years, to a new Eurobond. It, it plays into the New World Order um, kind of uh, thinking, but it's a step be before you have the new world order, you'll have the, the European, new European order, which will be run out of Berlin. And so all that debt will be rolled up into a new euro bond, and then it'll be restructured and resecuritized, and the banks will make another huge round of huge fees. And then it'll be uh, turned into 30, 40, 50 year debt, and the interest rate will be low, of course, and the uh, ECB and the Deutsche uh, and the Bundesbank, the old German central bank, this will be the new European-wide central bank. And they will effectively have this European-wide government that was not elected, that they put together themselves, that will be running Europe. And you'll, you've got one step removed then from the same thing happening in North America and Asia as we head toward the new world order, as you put it. But this is that the, the, the penultimate step toward new world order. It happened this week with France and Germany agreeing or talking about having a dual governance system and combining their economies in a way that's completely outside of any election or referendum by any of the underlying citizens. And again, by penultimate, next to the paramount. So the yeah. next level, in fact, we say that in Obama deception and fall of the republic, we describe how they would create global crises and currencies, implode each region, set up banking dictatorships over those, which will then merge into the Bank of the World, which uh, the Financial Times, Time Magazine, Newsweek are all pushing as a solution. Hey, you know those big secretive bankers that did all this? They've got a solution. They're going to rule everything now. Doesn't that sound great? We're going to come back and continue with, with where this will lead on the other side with Max Kaiser. And then we're going to take some of your phone calls on the other side. But yes, there's the Daily Mail headline. Welcome to the Fourth Reich, and it's all out of crises. Rise of the Fourth Reich, how Germany is using the financial crisis to conquer Europe. Stay with us. You just joined us, Max Kaiser and I. We're breaking down the heart of the matter. Then we're going to your phone calls. There's the Daily Mail. Uh, I saw just scores of other newspapers in Europe and the United States with the same headline. Rise of the Fourth Reich. How Germany is using the financial crisis to conquer Europe. But more than that, Germany's the biggest contributor to the, quote, bailouts, which are really consolidations. And there's been many founders of the EU that have bragged, we've quoted them in our film, saying the euro was set up 
by the banking cartels to bring countries into receivership. So to say that Germany itself is leading this new Reich, I don't I really agree with that, or France either. The big mega banks are using the power of those countries' economics to dominate the others while transferring the power, as was reported yesterday, to a new super economic order. You can, in fact, search that term for folks. A new super economic order where the finance ministers, all revolving door employees of uh, the big mega banks, literally run the countries. That's why they're saying now in Greece and other areas, their countries, uh, their people don't run anything. Their parliaments run nothing, like a third world country that signed on to the IMF or World Bank. But again, most of this debt is not owed by the people. Depending on the estimates I've seen, on average, it's above 90% is actually derivatives that are fraudulent. Uh, what is the path here, Max Kaiser? A, where will the establishment, the, the global banking occupation, as you dub it, what is their goal? What are they going to try to do versus what should we do uh, to counter them? Well, just to follow up on what we were saying in terms of the uh, this new euro bond and global euro universal euro bank, another part of the urgency to this is what's happening in the Swiss franc because the Swiss franc is running away, you know, in value against the dollar and the euro, it's up 40, 50 percent, and this is not helping Switzerland; it's hurting their export market. So as soon as they get this new euro bond off the ground, I am making this prediction: you will see a peg of the Swiss franc to this new euro global, this new euro bond banking, you know, this new uh, configuration. Speak up for me, Max. Yeah, once that's, um, and you'll see a peg to the to the from the Swiss franc to this new. To, there's an urgency to it because the Swiss franc is running completely out of control on the upside, and it's hurting the Swiss you know, economy. Well, that was my next point. They tried to devalue it, as you know, yesterday, and that made investors only rush in more and greedily buy it. Yeah, they also outlawed short selling of bank stocks in Europe, and that did not stop the collapse today. That's very, very telling. It shows that the, the, the speculative frenzy to go after these banks and their inherent weakness is, 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 is enormous, and that's why now the talk is that a French bank will go bankrupt, and it will require now a huge global response. Now, Max, this sounds like a snake eating itself because a lot of these big mega banks, I mean, uh, this is the core of the globalist system. And yes, they're using the crisis to get even more power, but their own, their own structure is being destroyed in the process. Have they bitten off more than they can chew? Were they irrationally exuberant themselves? Did they become... Uh, delusional? Uh, did they get delusions of grandeur? Uh, could this be the end of these people? Well, they're killing off the competition. So, for example, on Wall Street now, you got rid of Bear Stearns, you got rid of Lehman Brothers, you got rid of all the competition. So when they set up these big deals, like when they take Facebook public or Groupon public, which incidentally has been exposed as a massive Ponzi scheme, only one or two banks get that deal. Only one or two banks are trading on the inside stock transactions. So this is all about consolidation toward just having a few global players, and they're getting rid of the competition. This is extremely anti-competitive. That's the worst element of this at all, of all, and that's the point that a leader like in the U.S. should be making first and foremost. Essentially, this is anti-competitive. The bailouts create uh, too big to fail, which is the very definition of anti-competition. So that's their goal. They which is too to big to get in trouble. So, so you concur with my analysis. This has all been designed to consolidate things down to just a handful of mega banks and a few families. And in the aftermath, it'll destroy the economy. How do we beat these people? Just continue to point out the fraud, point out the Ponzi scheme. I mean, I have an article here uh, in the Austin American Statesman today with a little $75 million Ponzi scheme, former Triton CEO, guilty in fraud case, and he did stuff here they break down that's mild compared to what uh, J.P. Morgan Goldman Sachs is doing. I mean, I mean, that's what Madoff was right when he said, look, the whole stock market's a Ponzi scheme. I mean, at the end of the day, this uh, Kurt Barton here in Austin and uh, Bernie Madoff are only trying to do what the big boys are doing. 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, they are trying to get down to the two or three, uh, uh, only the biggest players. But you would expect them to do that. That's what you expect happens in an economy. And, but that's why you need regulation. Because even Adam Smith talked about this in Wealth of Nations in 1776, that book was published. And he said, you know, the animal spirits, well, that's, you know, or, or the competitive spirits, uh, need to be constantly and vigilantly monitored because, as he put it, if you, took, if you put two businessmen at, in, in, a, in a bar, they will collude. That's their nature. So you must be vigilant on the regulatory side. And this is something that for 20 years, there, all the regulations have been deregulated, and it was sold to us as a way to grow the economy. It did for a while grow the real estate market, and so people looked the other way. Until the real estate market collapsed, and people were left worse off than when they started. And now we're back to the fundamental question of, well, shouldn't these bankers be regulated? That's the fundamental question. Yeah, they haven't and even brought back Glass-Steagall that we got after the Depression. So, so here's the issue. They're not bringing the regulation back in. The public is waking up, though. And so it's two freight trains uh, in, in collision course. If they continue these policies for another two years, as they've announced, giving themselves free money while blocking... Uh, and, and the Federal Reserve paying banks not to lend to Main Street, what is going to happen? Well, at this point, there is only really one solution, and that would go under the category of debt jubilee. These debts must simultaneously be scrubbed off the books. The bondholders must be paid the piper. They, they're going to take the massive losses. That's what Ron Paul says we've got to do. That's he's absolutely correct. And Jim Rickert, who's an excellent uh, guy, you see him on TV often. I've interviewed him several times. Uh, he'll break it down for you as well. He's an excellent guest to consider for your show, Jim Rickert. Uh, he is of the same belief as well. Uh, and if you go throughout history, it, it's right there in the Bible. You know, and the Bible itself talked about uh, having a jubilee every period of time to purge the system of all the bad debt. Yeah, every uh, 10 years. And, and, okay. and, and, well, and, and again, these idiots that say, <laughs> you've got to prop it up, we've got to fix the system. Uh, what's the magnet? Because some say it's 100 times, some say 200 times. The derivatives magnitude versus real assets. I mean, th there's no paying off a black hole. The more solar systems you feed into it, the bigger it gets. Well, the global GDP of the world is about 50 trillion. And the global derivative market is $600 trillion. So that's your ratio right there. It's over 10 to 1 uh, of, of faulty, bad derivatives to, to, to uh, the GDP of the country, that, of the world. That's so you disagree the with the analysis that it's $1.5 quadrillion? Well, it's a, it's, see, there's, there's, two, there's two numbers here. One is the market size, which is the actual buying and selling of derivatives, which is $1.5 quadrillion. Then there's the underlying value of the underlying securities themselves, which is approximately $600 trillion. Then uh, some people will say, well, these are completely matched. Therefore, the liability is not that great. But that assumes that a counterparty like J.P. Morgan is solvent. And that's where people like myself and others point out that, wait a minute, you can't really assume that J.P. Morgan is solvent because they, they have $90 trillion of these bad debts on their books, and they're not solvent. Therefore, you must use that value of $600 trillion as the liability. You can't assume that these are going to be offset in some way. And the trading of these derivatives is over a quadrillion, and that's where the bankers make their fees. They trade these every single day. You know that there's over $4 trillion worth of Forex or, you know, uh, currency trades every single day. So the entire capitalization of America turns over, you know, $14 trillion. That turns over every three or four days. The entire capitalization of America spins every week. And they're all in there getting fees on... They're and buying and selling America every week for a fee, and the guy, the little businessman out there who's trying to scrape by selling widgets for a 50% markup is trying to compete for it to make his twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. He's competing with the bankers that are in the $1.5 trillion market where they're spinning his entire country. And now the price. bankers are saying, raise the taxes to pay us more, more bailout money on the little guy on the street. Uh, it is just incredible. You know, I meant to get to Stan and Joe and Mark.
and I, I really want to get to them, but we're just we're just out of time. I apologize to the callers because uh, I've got uh, Dr. Bob Bowman coming up, it, I'm, and I can't do overdrive because I'm on. But um, we'll see what happens uh, before the callers all hang up. Let me think about it during the break and figure out what we're going to do here. Uh, gosh, I tell you, I mean, we're in a race here, Max. We either educate the public and the public take some interest in this and really get angry and, and say no to these people, or we have no future. But I think at the end of the day, the good news is people are starting to get angry if establishment hacks to get elected, like uh, like Rick Perry are having to talk like Ron Paul. I mean, in the final equation, is that not a positive uh, indicator, uh, Max? Well, Ron Paul gets it, and clearly he would be the guy who you would want to sort through this mess. But as we know in American political history, it seems that every time you get somebody who knows what they're talking about, even close to getting into office, so, you know, there's a lot of problems suddenly that come uh, from left field. You know, Rick Perry, it, you know... First hold on, hold on, finish up, finish up, stay there. Talk to Max all day. I could talk to callers all day. I could talk to our guests forever. I, I love doing this radio show. You know, it's painful to know this stuff's happening, but it's even more painful to not have an avenue to confront these people. I, I can't imagine what it's like for people that are awake, but who aren't out warning others. And I can't imagine what it's like for the general public that's still not aware of what's happening when they finally get hit by this. Max, you were making an, an interesting point about the New World Order during the break, and then on Rick Perry. Uh, please finish. Um, right. The, um, as we were saying, the penultimate step toward this New World Order, we're seeing it in Europe, the trans-European bond market that's going to report only to itself, okay? This is plays into the Alex Jones New World Order thesis. And, you know, going back five years, that was, it seemed like it was an idea that was not on the radar. And, you know, we talked about the debt jubilee concept, which is taken from the Bible. You know, to use another Bible story, it's like that Noah and the Ark story. You know, when Noah started to build the ark, everyone thought he was crazy. Now, what we now know is that the ark you've been building has been to protect us from the rising tide of debt, 40 days and 40 nights of bank closures of a bank holiday. That's what's coming, 40 days and 40 nights of a global bank holiday. And, this, and then the other end of this will be the new world order, which will mean all the global currencies will be reset like Bretton Woods Part 2. The dollar is going to take a 50 to 60% haircut down. Gold will be a lot higher, so will silver, and various other currencies will plug into the system in different ways. But that's now no longer off the radar. That's on the radar. Now it's happening. And it, it comes down to faith. You know, as these Bibles full of allegories, Alex. I don't take the Bible literally. I see it as a, allegories that can be used, you know, don't let, don't let Rick Perry steal the Bible and use it to promote his evilness. You know, the allegories can be used by anybody to promote anything, in this case, goodness. The, 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 the Noah and the Ark story is a fantastic story as an allegory, as an analogy of what the problem is. There's a 40 day and 40 night of bank holiday coming. We're building the Ark out of gold and silver, and you have to have faith. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I do believe in God and, and intervening in the affairs of, of, of humankind if, if, if we ask God for guidance and also take action. But um, we are definitely in a very, very dangerous time right now. Uh, Max Kaiser, MaxKaiser.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. All right, folks, we got Dr. Bob Bowman coming up.